Well, hello everyone and welcome to our Monday Thought for the Week. Just an opportunity that I felt uh, every week that I want to encourage you as we begin another week in lockdown. Now, when I started this, I never thought I would be bringing object lessons, really. I would, I would just be sharing from God's Word, but God thought differently. And so every week he points out something in our home and says, talk about that marriage, you know, and so being obedient, I have to do that. Well, this week's is another little sign, and it's a quote by a man called Ralph Waldo Emerson. And this is what he said. Let us be silent that we might hear the whisper of God. Let us be silent that we might hear the whisper of God. And, you know, as I reflected on that and asked the Lord what he wanted me to share with you this uh, today, I was just reminded of all the noise that's around us. Um, We probably have the TV and the radio on, and I know for some of us, especially those of us who live alone, it's on because it gives us companionship or company. We feel that we're not on our own when we can hear a voice or voices in the background, don't we? Normally, when we're out and about, not in lockdown, there's so much noise around us. There's the noise of the traffic, there's the the noise um, of the shops, there's the noise of friends and family and their voices. And so, in many ways, we've not been used to stillness or silence. And especially for those of you who are living alone, I know how difficult that must be. I, I, I know the sense of isolation that some of you are feeling because um, I've heard that uh, within the life of our congregation. And so it's very hard for us, isn't it, at times though, to be still and to be silent. Um, we, We find it unnatural at times, and yet it's in the silence, it's in the stillness that we can hear God. Yes, he speaks in so many different ways. Uh, to us if we could but listen. But there's something about the stillness and the silence that is a platform to actually hear his voice, to hear his whisper. And we know, folks, that there's um, evidence of that in Scripture. In 1 Kings, we can read of the story of Elijah, a wonderful prophet. And Elijah, in, in chapter 18, had defeated the prophets of Baal, if you remember. He'd gone up against them. And the Lord had uh, uh, come and, and done what he needed to do in order to do that. And so at the end of that, Elijah is so happy and so pleased, in fact, so pleased that he runs ahead of the king in front of his chariot. But then very shortly after that, Jezebel, the king, the king's wife, the queen, sends him a message to tell him, Elijah, don't rest on your laurels. I'm coming after you. And having defeated these prophets, having succeeded to do with the Lord's help, something vitally important at the time, the last thing he expected was this. And so the consequence on him was to be disheartened and disappointed and to get really down and to run away. And he finds himself in, in, uh, at Mount Horeb, Sinai, if you like, where Moses himself had received the commandments. I don't think there's a, that was accidental. I think he, he deliberately went there to that place. And in his, just his pain and his defeat, his discouragement, his depression almost, the Lord speaks to him, tells him to, to go out of the cave if you hear, remember this, he says to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I've been very zealous for you, Lord. The Israelites, your people have rejected you um, and they've put your prophets to death with the sword. I'm the only one left. The Lord says, go out and stand on the mountain and the presence of the Lord will, will pass by. And of course, the Lord does And of course, he comes first of all in a great and powerful wind. But the Lord was not in the wind, we read in 1 Kings 19. And after the wind, there was the earthquake, but we read the Lord wasn't in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord wasn't in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. 
And when Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and he went out and he stood at the mouth of the cave and there the Lord spoke to him and gave him direction and gave him purpose and reminded him of his call. And you know, folks, God can speak in so many different ways, of course. He speaks uh, through his word, of course. Please, please get into it. He spoke clearly in the person of Jesus, the word made flesh. He speaks through creation we, we know. He speaks through other people to us. But he also speaks in the stillness and the silence, if we give him the chance. So this week, would you do that? Some of you are wrestling with questions maybe about your future, work situation, maybe you're on furlough. Sadly, maybe some of you have made redundant or you're fearing that and you don't know what to do and where to go. Some of us are wrestling with issues in our family. We're struggling with people that we love who are ill. And we're downhearted, maybe disappointed, maybe even in the Lord. Some of us may have a, an underlying depression at the moment or others it's been caused because of this lockdown. We hate being on our own. We hate not being around other people. And so we've kind of got down, just like Elijah. But the Lord is saying to us today, give me time. Go and find space. Go to a place where there's no noise, maybe a bedroom, a, a room in the house. Put all the TVs and radios off. Sit with your Bible. Share with the Lord on your, what's on your heart. But then listen. And listen, because he will speak. That's my experience. Now, it might be just a, a gut feeling that he shares with you, that you hear. It may be something from scripture that he reveals to you. Maybe later it's a phone call from a friend. I've often had that. But take the time, folks, in the quiet and the stillness, that you might be silent, that you hear the gentle whisper. Because God will speak and does speak through that, just as he speaks in so many other ways. But the condition is you have to be silent. You have to be still. Why don't you try that today? Or every day this week? Journal what he tells you or talks to you about. See if you can hear his voice. And I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear from you if he does. Email me at minister at firstbanger.org to share. May we pray. Lord Jesus, you said that we, your sheep, those of us who love you, will hear your voice. And so I pray that each one who takes the time to be still and to be silent will hear from you, Lord, even in the gentle whisper. Lord, that you, we would recognise your voice, your tone of love and encouragement and support. And Lord, like Elijah, you would reveal your plans and your purposes to us. And like him, Lord, you would show us that even in the, the, the difficult time, you are with us. You never leave us or forsake us. And Lord, like Elijah... We're not on our own. You send other people and you give us a, all a purpose and a plan for what is to come. Would you reveal that to each one of us in these days, Lord? For we ask it in the wonderful name of Jesus, the Word made flesh, our shepherd. Amen. Have a great week, folks.